Welcome to Desde Cero. Bienvenidos a Desde Cero. Today on the podcast, we are talking with a longtime friend and big supporter of our boxing community, our guest, car salesman, Bryce flu hop yeah How's yeah going, Bye, bryce? from bryce how you doing how you doing coach <laughs> pretty good man how you been carroyo carroyo hey so here's the deal i miss your gym right it was so close to my house yeah. i could just i could just <laughs> jog over there and chunky 40 year old and go hit the bag real quick yeah a lot of people a lot of people it. miss the gym man i know it i know it so it's good I had to, to do it's good to see you again you know yeah man well welcome to the podcast oh man it's it's a pleasure to be on here um Let's just hop right on into whatever you want to talk about. Well, uh, we want to know uh, where's uh, Bryce from? Oh, man. Brenham, Texas. Grew up in Brenham, Texas, Bluebell country over there. You born in, in, in uh, Brenham? Don't tell a lot of people this. I was born in Oklahoma City. My dad was on the news. He's on the news here in Channel 3, as a matter of fact. Really? Then he goes up there, Beaumont, and go to this little thing called CNN. Thank God he didn't go to that. When he was here, you could be... You could be attending Texas A&M and be on the news as a sports director in 1972. Think about that. Wow. It won Homer Edwin flew hop on there. It was Brian Miller. Brian Miller yeah. as, as the new, so newscaster. Was, is that one? Uh-huh, yes, sir. And so he was on there and then, uh, you know, bounced around. I was only up there seven months with the family who came back. They were in the family tire business, 90 years old. Dad had a radio station. Uh Real estate, a bunch of stuff like that. So, so how how did you end up uh, coming to Bryan College Station and oh, settling in here? Well, my mom, my dad passed away after I was in uh, Houston, Austin, a couple other places. I uh, my mom was here, and I said, "Well, let me be closer to family. We have family over here." And uh, so I said, "Well, man, I'm selling cars. I'm going to come over here. It's a growing community. They say us in Frisco. And incidentally, General Motors says." We're number one the next 20 years post-COVID and then into this, whatever this little recession is going to be. And then uh, Frisco is number two. I told them they probably tell them that they're number one as well. You know what I mean? <laughs> but I tell you. <laughs> well, uh, before we get going, I'd like to remind everybody, as usual, to, as usual, to uh, please subscribe to uh, There's the Settle Con Manuel on YouTube. And uh, let's keep growing the channel. Oh, yeah. Okay? Y'all, got, y'all got good people on, man. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they've been they've been pretty good. I, I kind of go to the gym and, and listen to my own podcast. I don't know if that's weird or not, but <laughs> but I enjoy. Well, you got You got to have quality control. Yeah, you know, I kind of enjoy listening to my own podcast. Hell yeah, yeah. Uh, well, let's get going with the uh, conversation, uh, Bryce. You, uh, what do you do? So, buy it from Bryce at Aggieland Chevrolet. We're uh, part of the uh, whole big group. Twenty eight dealerships over there, and uh, right. the Keating Auto Group, and. Uh, you know, I was there when it was Tom Light and it was family owned. And it's like they say the shark can only grow in the fish bowl and you let it out and it gets bigger and larger. You have no idea what you can do in any business when I, it not that it was family owned, it was bad. I love the lights. They were phenomenal. But, you know, when the chain is off, it was just like volume and this crazy thing going on with all the cars and the shortages and the chip shortage and supply chain. Even through that, we sold more cars than we did before. How right. does that even happen? Yeah. yeah. You know? So, uh, so you work for Chevrolet. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's the name of the, of the Chevrolet dealership? Aggieland Chevrolet. Aggieland Chevrolet. Keating Auto Group. So now, you know, they have, let's see, Nissan, Hyundai, BMW, Mercedes, Ford, and us just here. Right. Better watch out on the other side, you know, going going, <laughs> going southbound to see what's uh, going to be available over there. They're always buying stuff up. Yeah. Incidentally, the fastest, uh, not even hostile takeover or anything like that, Keating Auto Group, 33 days, I think, if, if somebody has to uh, fact check me on that, but in Conroe, I think at that Toyota, the fastest deal to take over and, and have another one and feather in the hat and that kind of thing so okay. we're doing really good they say we're seventh or eighth in the houston area you know how far away we are right wow but man it's it's just changed so much in the car business second largest purchase usually right yeah. after a house yeah you can oh, imagine yeah. though it's like house and vehicle and, and now they cost probably the same um no i know it man i'm telling you <laughs> some of those uh big rigs those dualies and three-quarter tons all right so uh, what made you decide to get into selling cars well you know I went to AM. Journalism, like my dad, I don't know, is an easy major. I was a frat rat, Phi Delta Theta, what's up? You know, my thing is 
I got in and got out four years somehow at Texas A&M, probably a little immature, doing a little growing. And then I saw when I was writing the news at Channel 11, uh, KHOU in Houston, CBS affiliate, 11th largest market, fourth largest city. Here we are. And I was like, man, we're not making any money in here. And they're just rigging how the news is. I saw it firsthand right after 9-11. I'm in the work area. Getting a job over there is kind of like a glorified news rat in the production, that kind of thing. And uh, I was like, man, all these sales guys are making all the money and driving these cars. And, you know, I'd wash cars in Brenham, Texas, at a Chrysler dealership at Apple Chrysler and uh, all that growing up. And, uh, you know, just around the car business and, you know, my dad working the register down there at the tire shop. And, you know, we used to do all 18 wheelers for Bluebell before they did their own little thing. Mm -hmm. So, right. but, you know, so you get into things like that. And I was like, man, I'm going to sales. Right. I knew so, I was going to. So how, how, how did you get into sales and selling cars? So Advantage BMW downtown, I literally walked in and they're like, no, no, no. Had my, my suit on like, you know, I was going to church or something. I'm like 22 out of school. Just worked for like a year at the place over there. And I said, man, I'm going to go try this out my lunch break. Come back, come back. J. David Guillory was my first sales manager. He said, all right, you came back three days in a row. You must want to do this. Right. <laughs> so I was like, I was just like, well, you know, I figured it was a game like that. Made ungodly amount of money for a 20-year-old. You know, but this is a different time that, you know, imagine this, you and I are working a deal and I'm trying to earn your business and we got windows right here and it's downtown and you have crackheads literally and homeless people <laughs> leaned up right here and you're buying an $80,000 car. It was just crazy. Right. But yeah, a lot has changed, you know. What was the, uh, what was the process like of, of uh, learning how to sell vehicles, sell and the, the training, et cetera? I mean, everybody has a, a little process. What do you here, have right? to know? You know, I mean, I don't know if you need to know anything, you know, if can you breathe air and walk straight? Can you chew gum? <laughs> you know, <laughs> no, I mean, I don't know. You People will say oh, I'm a people person. I'll, you know, I don't know. It's a uh, you either got it or you don't. Some people can sell and some people can't. There's nothing hard to it. It's just earning people's business and that kind of thing. But I don't know. There's like an it factor. Maybe, you know, some people try it. Well, why'd you get out? You know, oh, the hours or this and that. Mm -hmm. Man, I know one thing. We're not digging ditches. You know what I mean? Right. So, I'm okay with it. I'll, I'll roll with the hours. You meet so many nice people, too. Right. Characters, too. Yeah. What's a, what's a day like in the life of a car salesman? You better get there early, like any any job. You don't want to be a guy just running right in. I always tell the 18, 24 demographic and these guys over here, get get to work early, man. Like, why why be late? Why, why give them a reason? You know what I mean? You're there. You're there. Be on point. Get your stuff going. So we go in about 10 till 15 till on nine o'clock, have a one hour lunch break. And we're there till eight o'clock can be tough on relationships, can be tough on marriages. You know, you have dogs, you have kids, balance, work life. But you know what? You're you're making good money. So, right. you know, the sacrifices, every job that right. There's a pros and cons. Right. What's it, what's it like dealing with the customers? Well, I mean, here's the thing. There's good in everybody. Sometimes people are going to be right. a prick, pardon my French. Sometimes people are going to be, you know, you're you're real nice. You do a test drive. You do this, and then and then you sit down. We're across from each other, and then all of a sudden it's Wild West, and you got like, uh, you know, the the things running across the thing. What do you call it? The the bushes or whatever what's it called you know what, I mean? what do you call it the, 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 like the western yeah yeah like the western you got like and they're like, Little brush. And I'm like yeah they're, yeah what's it called yeah we'll look that later what's yeah. it called you'll know what i'm talking about <laughs> you know, i don't remember yeah we can, I, i'm visualizing it going up going across the desert t t uh, tumbleweed is that what it is tumbleweed. Tumbleweed. but you know you know you had a good time you get to know each other y'all you've set an appointment they're coming and then you sit down and all of a sudden it's down to it the business and some people, everybody's different. They just want to get it over with. Some people, they, they've done their homework. And, and when I mean that, they watch some YouTube video on how to buy a car. Right. Well, guess what? I've watched them all, too. I'm more of a shoulder to shoulder with you. We're going to get through this together. You know right. how it is. Yes. You, bought, you bought a few yeah. from me. I but, did. Full disclosure, right? <laughs> but, but my thing is, you know, people get kind of on the defense when they're buying cars. And I get it. But it's like... That's not the thing. I'm a customer advocate. 
when it comes to when I was at the family owned dealerships, they kind of don't like that as much. Now with this big, you know, volume and everything, it's like, we don't want to sell you one car. We want to sell you three cars. Right. You know what I mean? I want to sell your family a car. I want to ask for the referrals. Which, which, which we've been doing. Right? Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> we love it. And then, uh, my thing is like, uh, Greg Gunn, my, my GM and he, you know, he's running the store over there, just turned it all around. And I, and I love working for the guy, but here's my thing. He said, if you run into somebody at the grocery store, he goes, do you want to be mad at you and be like, oh, they screwed me? Or do you want to be like, hey, there's Bryce. I want to, I want to go ahead and introduce him to my aunt. She right. needs a Tahoe too. So it's just the mindset is huge, but customer service and experience over everything else. Everything else falls in place. So, what uh, what is the craziest story you have while selling a car? <laughs> is there, do you have crazy stories? Oh though? man, where to start? I have a couple. So, there's a guy. He was at I was at BMW downtown. This is a circa 2003. Former backup quarterback at San Diego State. Giovanni, what's up, buddy? Shout out. I'm going to tag you in this. I'm going to tell the story, but your wife won't know. This is funny. So this guy's from California, from Carmel, right? But he went to uh, down south to play. And so he's over here in Houston selling cars. Why? I don't know. Some girl. He's a great salesman. Well, we, we would go out all the time back then. And, and you know, now I don't do that. I guess it's school nights, you know. But back then, you're in your 20s. You're in Houston, fourth largest city, all the restaurants, the clubs, we're going out. He texts me. This is right when text SMS texting came out, right? right. Still the black and white screen phones. You guys don't even know anything about this. <laughs> no. And I get this text and he goes, hey, I'm going to run a little late in the morning and gives me a stock number for one of the cars for a BMW. He goes, could you pull it in the morning and have it ready? I said, man, I got you. So right when I get there and have my coffee, I go out there and I, I go and uh, get the key and I open it up. This fool is asleep in the back seat of a BMW 3 Series. And I was like, he didn't even, he found the door that was unlocked. <laughs> Text me. He goes in there into service into parts and buys a BMW shirt and goes and sells two cars that day. And I was like, who is this guy? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he was man. built different. He was built different. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Uh. <laughs> but uh, now I've, you know, I've, uh, I've been in, I've been on car uh, test drives and that kind of thing where I was like, man, I don't know if, uh, you know, we're, we're head towards Hearn right. on the, on the test drive. And I, and, and I'm like, oh yeah, we can exit here. And they keep driving. You're like, man, what am I going to have to do with this for? Right. They're, they're in their own mode. They're on their own time. You know what I mean? Right. And it's like, well, it's a customer, but you're like, there's a certain point where you're like, man, what's going to happen next? Yeah. I don't you, know. You ever felt like you weren't going to make it back? <laughs> so my, my girlfriend, she loves to watch all the, you know, Dateline and 60 Minutes and all that in the, in the uh, what is it, the crime TV and all this right. stuff and whodunits. And I, and I said, you watch all that stuff, you know, so how would you get rid of me? No hesitation. She says, we will, you go on a test drive <laughs> and you would never come back. And I'm like, what? Wow. <laughs> okay. I, did, I sleep on the couch tonight, but. So is, is it frustrating when you spend hours trying to sell a car and it don't happen? You know what? After a while. I think the best thing to say is like at first when you're young, you're like, oh man, you know, I spent right. all this time. Then you kind of get hardened and you kind of get like very zen about it. Like you care deeply right. and you don't care at the same time. It's like when you get punched, right? It's like, man, I got punched, but also I'm about to punch back or whatever. You know what I mean? Right. You, you, you're at that point where it's like, it's part of it. You know what I mean? Right. And the better you get, the thing is people getting over that hump. You know what I mean? And I think when you start young in it, it's a different story. People who like sold insurance and then went to it or they couldn't do it and then they went and sold insurance, you know, that kind of thing. Right. Different. Like like last week's podcast. Oh yeah. Well, two it? weeks ago. Oh. <laughs> what uh what are your work hours? So nine in the morning till eight at night. You sell a car, you leave at six, the way we're we're set up. But it's kind of twenty four seven, you know what I mean? There's times I always tell my customers Text me or call me. I don't care what time it is. I'm going to get to it when I see it. And, you know, you got to have time and balance and everything. But I, I'm, I'm glad people are texting me. So what? You're right. a friend of mine now. Well, I mean, you know, why would why would you ever feel like a customer is bothering you about something? Right. Yeah. Every time I've texted you, you re replied like Well, I mean, yeah. Quick. <laughs> but, you know, coach, coach, you know. <laughs> but, no, I mean, why wouldn't you, you know? Right. I mean, there's no, no off in it. But that's sales and anything, though. Like, 
you have to be there for your customer. But why, why would you not be out? You know, you, you need to be responsive and you need to be there for them. And that, that's just how it has to be these days. You have to be different now. You go right now and you look up used cars, used trucks, used SUVs in Bryan or Brazos Valley. I'm the only salesman that pops up with all the dealerships. Google Google Ads, I'm giving you the game. Y'all need to catch up. Why would you not do that? Google uh, Google uh, SEO, search engine optimization stuff. Right. That's like 10, 15 years old, right? Why are y'all not doing it? I don't know. I tell all the guys at work, we should have all that. You should all be on there before all the other dealers as your individual self. Right. How many cars do you sell in an average a month? Well, you never want to be a 10-car guy. What's a what do you what do you what ten car guys just kind of like you're calling it in and you're just doing it. it's like it's like a you know it's straight commission do or die sink or swim feast or famine so it's like we are motivated to make more money so you want to sell your goal is why not shoot for twenty plus cars a month if you can in the market you know it swims it's different you never know sometimes you're gonna have a bad month sometimes you're gonna have a really good month but you try to just work on consistency you know what I mean All right. what's the best month you've ever had. I think only like 22, honestly. You know, people say, oh, I sold 30. Or you'll have a guy who's a GM, you know, somewhere. And they're like, oh, you know, I sold 30 a month. And I was like, you know, oh, I'll bet you did. Uh-huh. Yeah. And, and, they, and, and some, <laughs> maybe some of them did. And other ones I'm like, because I know a guy who's a GM and uh, who was a GM. And now he's selling cars again, whatever happened. And I'm like, dude, you barely hit 10, you know. So mm-hmm. the thing is, I don't know everything. I know what I know. I don't know everything about anything. I'm just a dude. All right, what's know? the what's the worst you've done in a month? Oh man, maybe maybe when I started at BMW, man, you might like seven, but the pay plan was different, you know, man. But you know, but that was at 2003 selling some seven series and three series and five series is a different story, you know. Do, but, uh, do all car salesmen work commission? Work on commission? They do. You know, you might have somebody that has like a guarantee when they get their feet wet in the business. Because they don't want to run people off. Like a, you get somebody who's like a bartender who's put up with a lot of people. They're actually really good at doing it. We right. have a couple now that we have a couple that made the, met the best margaritas in town, or they know how to put up with people. They know how to put up with people when they're drunk or whatever, and do a lot of things at a lot of time. They're actually really good for a lot of different things on recruiting, in my opinion. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, work, working on commission makes you work hard. And have to be driven. You have to be. Right? You, you have to be a sociopath. I think too. So, no, <laughs> but I, I think some people though, like how how could you just do that over and over again? You know what I mean? And you have to question yourself. Like I've been doing it so long, and it's not a fear because I've left the business and come back and tried other things. But it's like if you're if you're good at it, you're good at it. But it's like you, there's hunters and there's gatherers. You know what I mean? Right. And, and you know it's not like. Some kind of cheesy meme where they put like uh, one of those dudes from uh, what's that show called? Pinky Blinders, and they have it in the background. And it's like, did you wake up today? And uh, you know, whatever, some kind of meme. That's not what I'm saying. Not some kind of BS like that, but legit. Like when you wake up in the morning, and it's like, are you a hunter? Or you a gatherer? You you're either built for it, or you're not. Right. Are you a sometimes salesman? I've heard before by a, a GM of mine. Are you an incidental salesman, you know, an accidental salesman? Or you you get up and you're like, you, you're earnest about what you do every day, you know what I mean? But right. that's anything, you know what I mean? Uh, my drywall guys, my plumber guys, people blue collar, I mean, the ones who are really good, they're not hung over coming in. They're just going through the motions. They're out there and they're hustling, right you know there. what I mean? They're, all, they're the first ones there. They're and... the first ones there, but it's the same thing, right? Yeah. It's the same thing, coach. So, hard work is hard work. Hard work is hard work. What's your favorite car on your on your lot? <sighs> man, you know, Chevrolet's coming out with some nice ones. Oh man, I tell you, I mean, it's hard to beat of all the stuff. The Colorado that just came out. Okay, a they hold their value like a Tacoma. B they're having a new body style that just came out. They have cameras underneath to see the clearance on the ZR2 for the mm-hmm. off road like the. The desert version, you know, the ZR2. And I had one before and I sold it. And I never had had a mid-sized truck before. I always had big trucks and that kind of thing. Absolutely love that truck. They don't make the diesel anymore. But the new one coming out, I'm tempted. The like Colorado? Oh, yeah. I, I think I saw a commercial on it. That, that looks a little bigger for Colorado. A little, it's a little bigger for Colorado. Right. People, it's going to be a big seller. People are going to be like, oh, man, I already got a Z71 ordered, a, a ZR2 for a guy who had a ZR2. 
But, you know, they're not for everybody. Tall guys say, oh, they're too big. You know, oh, man, I'm 5'11". I get in there. But my thing is gas mileage. Who cares? Let's be honest about it. That's another thing. People say, oh, maybe diesel hits people. But a lot of times it's like they have a gas card for a company or something. Right. We all feel it at the pump. But the thing is, are you going to put the gas in and go to work or are you not? You're going to do it. Yeah. And they're like, so when people say gas mileage, unless you're just like a road warrior, I, mean, I don't think a lot of people, yeah, it's important. And it's a hot button, but you're going to put your gas in and live your life, right? Yeah. At a still going to still gonna have to fill it up or, or at least put $5. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But I don't know. A, you know, my you know, my thing is the best car is a paid off car, you know, yeah. have the title. But you know, that's a thing. So but uh what yeah. is the what is the car you sell the most? Trucks, you know, the Silverado, the Equinox, the Malibu. Uh thing is that Equinox, I'm gonna be honest with you. Put the gas in, pay your insurance, or forget about it. Safe, bulletproof. When I say bulletproof, like you don't have to think about anything, there's no problems. And, uh, you know, anytime like a manufacturer has a new vehicle come out, there's always like little glitches and stuff. There's, you have more in these trucks than you did when we allegedly went to the moon, right. you know, and they say, oh, you, you know, we went to the moon with you know, less than this analog and blah, blah, blah. Now you have Google maps, you have all these little circuits. So the microchip shortage was just here. Here we are at the microchip shortage. You have all this stuff that you're going to have in the $60,000, $70,000 truck. $55,000 truck. We owe you rear cross traffic alert. Well, there's about a four month window and we had to fulfill all that stuff. That's the hand you've been dealt. That's the plate you've been served. Right. We took care of it. We're doing it, you know, but and it's caught up now. Toyota, dead last bottom over there. Feel bad for them on new cars. They don't have anything. And then, you know, so it's a blessing to have a lot full of vehicles. So could have happened to anybody, you right. know. So yeah. Would you recommend becoming a car salesman to anyone? I mean, it takes a, a certain kind. I mean, there's certain people who can only be grave diggers. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's not for everyone, but it's it's you know, uh, you know, Bubba Dixon of all people. You know, he said he he used to be our sales manager, but he said you know. It's the easiest job in the world. And I was always like, yeah, whatever. You don't, you don't listen. I think about it now. I was like, it really is. You're talking to people and that kind of thing. But once you know your steps and your process, it's being fast for your customer, right. but you don't want to be too fast and skip over stuff. I mean, a lot of paperwork when you're on there. You don't want to, you don't want to miss anything. You know what I mean? Right. But, you know, they say make a friend and all that kind of stuff. But I mean, it's just, it's all about networking and that kind of thing. And being right. in a good community like this, it's growing. So phew. here's the other thing. You go to Houston, you're just another number. You're a fly by night, sales guys bounce around all over the place over there. And uh they just go where the money is and they're not trying to build something. Right. I, I I left the car business for a little bit and then came back because they said this guy's trying to build something. And and I was like, let's see, let's put it to the test. You know, a year later back at the same dealership. They're not lying. Love it. Sponsoring local stuff. They've always done that, right? Now it's going the extra mile, you know, doing this. We're going to do a football clinic, I think, coming up with okay. uh, Trayvon Williams. I just played a golf tournament with him the other day. And, you know, little things are it's like it's people giving back to the community here. And like Caldwell and Brenham and places like that. We sell cars all around there. But it's like, you know, I'm drinking the Kool-Aid a little bit. So Okay. Well, the uh – I think the next question is going to be why why you wanted to come on the podcast. Well, you know, um, the question is: Gervonta Davis or Ryan Garcia? <laughs> well, you know, I'm I'm with Gervonta. Oh, I'm with I'm man. with. I'm, oh, I'm gonna, gonna tell you. Are, are you gonna pull out some stats? Well, I'm, 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 I'm gonna pull it gonna out. I'm just gonna pull it out. Just see, here's my thing: is, stat guy, huh? Well, here's my thing. <laughs> I, I'm gonna tell you. I'm with Tank. Right. I'm with Tank. Okay. Okay. You got you got Ryan Garcia is twenty three and zero. Okay. You you got Gervonta's twenty eight, no, so very close, no very big deal, close. right? Oh man. So here's the thing. How, what are they? What are they fighting at? What's the weight? One thirty. They went to one thirty six. They were at one thirty six. Right. He hadn't made that weight in two years. Garcia. Garcia. I love him. He's fast. Everybody likes him. He's the pretty boy. He's like the new golden boy. Right. And he's sponsored by who? He's he's promoted by who? You know, yeah. so it's the same thing. 
Javonta, that power, you know. And these guys are little. People forget this. We're big mm. guys. Everybody in here is pretty big. Those guys are little monsters, mm. though, in that ring against each other. And I like both of them. But if I'm mm. if I'm doing it though, both have the money. And now it's just a legacy. You know what I mean? Mm. Don't you think, Coach? Yeah. Um, Who do you like? I've I said it maybe three times on this podcast. I think Tank Davis is going to win, but I'm pulling Ooh. for Ryan Garcia. Well, that's so neutral, okay. though. So no, it's not. It's if not. you're if you're putting money on in Vegas tomorrow, I don't. I don't bet. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to see a good fight, right? Yeah, I want to see a good fight, but but I I think uh, Ryan Garcia uh, can can hurt Tank Davis if he lands his his. You know, signature left hook. At left hook. Uh, you know, and and he could, you know, he's he's taking people down with body shots. The thing is that Tank Davis is, is, a, is a real tough guy. And he puts in the work. And uh, what I didn't like is the stipulations that he put on Ryan Garcia. But Ryan Garcia wanted to fight. He wanted that's, to fight. That's, that's, that's the current and state he said, of the okay. game. And then they changed it again. Right. And they changed it. And they so, made it real hard. He I jumped mean, through the hoops. Right, so there there shouldn't be any any excuses because he signed a, he signed a, a dotted line. So and and let's talk about this because it's an important thing, and a lot of people don't talk about it enough with uh, mental health, with especially males in right. sports. Right. So Ryan Garcia, is it a chink in the armor? Because he had that little time where he said he had to pull away. Who knows what happens in people's lives, right? right. I don't want to hold it against him, but it's in the back of my head, you know. Right. I mean, he's a, he's had a couple of fights after that, and and he's he's been. Uh, seems like he bounced back. He, he seems like he bounced back, and and uh, he seemed, you know, good at, at, with his performances. So uh, I, I, that shouldn't be an issue. The only issue is going to be Tank Davis. <laughs> <laughs> is this is this the best fight since Mayweather and? Uh, what what was the last him and him and Pache, uh, Pacheco? I, I haven't. Wasn't that the biggest one? I remember it was in a May. It was like Cinco de Mayo. It was like 2015, right? I, to I, me, I, I mean, there's been fights since then, but there there haven't there haven't been any interesting fight. I'm, I'm kind of disappointed in boxing. Actually, uh, there there hasn't been these guys haven't been calling each other out. You know, uh, you know, Canelo is you know. I've been watching the fights, but I haven't been excited about the fights. Here's my thing. Side note. Uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Lomachenko. Right. Why didn't he never have pay-per-view? Right. That was the next guy. And then it's like the collarbone's messed up now, so we're never going to get to see it. Right. Uh, he's fighting Haney, mm -hmm. uh, I believe, in May. Devin Haney, Is yeah. it May or March? I don't know. I don't know uh, but he's fighting Haney, and that's the fight that I – I'm excited about. You know, this is going to be a good four. Uh, Tank Davis and, like I said, Ryan Garcia is going to be a good four or five round fight. Well, you know, I was watching, you know, I love YouTube Premium. You got commercial oh, free, yeah. whatever you got to get into. <laughs> well, you know, for cars, for cars and, and product knowledge and, you know, whatever you're into, it could be guns, it could be boxing, MMA, right? Right. But I start looking and I said, man, Francisco Fonseca, they both fought him. And, right. and looking at those fights and how they reacted with that guy, right? And, uh, then they are, they're both, they both, you watch all these things, they're both getting uh, compared to Mayweather. And I'm like, man, is he, are they in the same, are they in the same? That's, that's, that's hard to, to you do. You know what I mean? But they're like, <laughs> they, they both say he's like Mayweather or uh, uh, Amir Khan or Gary Russell Jr., you yeah. know. I mean, okay, maybe, but they're their own people, right? Right. But, and I get the Ryan Garcia thing, he's very marketable. Yes. But, but, at, you know, at the end of the day, when it's those dudes in the ring. Yeah. Ryan Garcia's jumped through all the hoops. Yeah, you know? it, it, it's going to be a good four round fight. I tell you. So, uh, but uh, you never know. It's boxing. You never know. Uh, so, last chance. Who you got? Oh, I'm I'm, Gerv <laughs> I'm Gervonta. I'm I'm Tank all day all long. Right. In fact, in fact, uh, I'll, it'll be fun in the comments. Though. I, I'm willing to put a rack on it. You know, Ooh. yeah, just to, anybody you call them out or anything? no? I'm just huh? interesting. You know, if they want to, they they can be in there in the comments. You know. <laughs> I'll, I'll take one of them. I don't want to get too crazy. Yeah, yeah no. but why not? You know, let's make it fun. We'll be watching it four yeah. downs, right? After after the uh, fight. April 22nd. Uh, is it Battle in the Brazos? What, yeah, yeah. Uh, is it uh, Boxing on the Brazos? Boxing on the Brazos. Bobby Powers. Uh, Bobby Powers. Bobby and Drew Powers. Lindsay. Drew Lindsay, little so, thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Everybody, I, I want to invite everybody to that uh, April 22nd boxing show here in College Station. 
and it'll uh, be kids all Wendy, ages. Wendy Boxer out there on Highway 30, right. and then uh, and then if you have a ticket to that or a wristband or whatever they're given, Bobby said you can go and watch it at Four Downs. Right, okay. it's a win-win. So it's a okay. day a day of it of good boxing and, nice. and fun, you know. Okay, the uh, the one fight I do want to see is Crawford and Spence. Oh yeah, I think. At, Besides that, I don't. I mean, Canelo. Maybe if he fights Benavides, maybe he fights one of the Charlo brothers. It'll get me excited. But no, I love the, the Charlo the, brothers. The, Lines the, only, baby. The guys, the guys, Canelo's fighting. It, you know, I'll watch and, and eat people's food. Well, <laughs> <laughs> but but my thing is, I love Terrence Bud Crawford, but he ain't getting old. All right, you know. Yeah, but, I mean, they're not they're not fighting. What's guys it for now? It's not for the money. Yeah. I mean, you know? let's get it going. And then everybody says, you know, boxing's so rigged and this and that, and it's so it's so this and that. But mm. I mean, I don't know. You know, these fights, the heavyweights. I don't even. I don't. Even, I'm not even interested in it right now. Yeah. I haven't been for a long time. I mean, uh, Fury and and uh, uh, nobody's excited Bronx, like that about the Bronx like Bombers. That. Yeah, Bronx yeah. Bomber. That, those are pretty good fights. I don't like him. He's from Alabama yeah. anyway. That Tuscaloosa. <laughs> Training, okay. training with those guys over there. But, uh, so uh, let's talk about music. What kind of music uh, do you listen to? So I can't stand it when people say, oh, I'll listen to everything. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm very specific on stuff that I listen to. But it has to be, are you are you working out? Right. Are, you, are, okay. you, are you driving to work? You give me a situation like that, ask me that, and I'll tell you what I'm listening to. You listen to everything, don't you? <laughs> So, what, do you, what do you do when, when you're driving on the road? What do you listen to? So, I tell you, I tell you, if I'm going to work, you know, people people listen to stuff to pump them up or whatever. You just, you know, you want to this. I like Cole Whittlesley, little, uh, local local guy nowadays. Arguably one of the best Texas breakup songs, you know, uh, of Texas country music. Okay. Check him out. He's good. Everybody knows he opens for people over at Harry's. When I was in the radio thing, you know, I got to meet him and everything. He's local? His agent. Yeah, yeah. Good old Aggie. But okay. that song nowadays, you'd be like, I like that. Don't let your girl listen to it, though. Oh, <laughs> um, But, you know, if, if I'm going to the gym right now, Finesse Two Times, you know, something like that, a little, a little hip hop like that. His new album is good. Um, there's a hunger in it, you know, if you like hip hop, you know. Okay. Uh, what's your favorite band? You got a favorite band? Like who have the most vinyl? I got a lot of vinyl. Got yeah. old vinyl. No, that who's, your, who's your favorite band? If you had one band to listen to, ooh, and we're just gonna say rock. Just who's your favorite band? I mean, man, <laughs> that's a good one. Yeah, like right. who who would I just jam? Because it's just there's so many different ones that are you know. Mm -hmm. Oh man, I mean, well, ask me that question. Who's your Matchbox Twenty? Matchbox Twenty. <laughs> you know, I when I was going to school, it's like, man, back in the day, I wasn't even going to school. Yeah, I was in high school. Okay. There's a fraternity house in in University of Texas. They had two fraternity houses, all at boys of the Texas money, right? They had an old one and a new one across the street from each other. Before they even were a big deal, before they were an MTV when they still played music videos. Right. Matchbox 20 played there. Oh, really? And they and they killed that's what I'm talking about though, that hunger. Yeah. Like they you know, sophomore album, you know, this is my thing on a band. Sophomore album, you get all these people and sink their teeth into it. Are you good or you're not good? That sophomore mm -hmm. album usually tells. Yeah. You know what I mean? Do they change it up? You know, everybody says Morgan Wallen, kind of uh, middle of the road, basic, basic kind of thing. You know, that's like girls who have live, laugh, love on their walls at the house. You know, yeah. but I love, I love Morgan <laughs> Wallen, but that's a basic, you know, uh, everybody well, likes Morgan Well, let's Wallen. check them out. Uh, you got top five movies of all time? Well, one of them's right behind you, Pulp Fiction up there. What number does that fall on your list? That's got to be top three. Yeah, easy, that's, easy. That's my number one. I mean, Tarantino. Right. He lived in Austin when I lived there. He yeah. had a place downtown. And uh, I remember that's MTV Cribs had a place just a couple blocks down. That was a different world. You know, they say cool can't last. You know, when I lived in Austin, it's like you go back now, it's like... A, I'm older. B, it's like it's everything went vertical, and you know I, I love capitalism and and grow, baby, grow, and drill, baby, drill. But it's so big now, you know, in tech and everything. But it, it, you got to embrace it. But it's not the same as it used right. to be. But I, I bring it up because movies and, and music and that kind of thing. I remember the QT Fest, you know, and they had Quentin Tarantino. I'm sitting there working in the club business, a, a little stint away from the car business, and uh, I was a liquor sales rep. 
and I have to work that night. We had something at some cheesy meat market club, you know, with right. the wristbands and bottle service. And across the streets, a QT fest at Cuba Libre, this little bar. And it's Quinn Tarantino, and he's right there across the street from me. And I can't go because I got to work. What year was this? Circa. Did he have Pulp Fiction? Or, 2004. Over? Oh, yeah. Oh, 2004. Oh, yeah. We're okay. talking Kill Bill era. Yeah, Kill Bill. Yeah, and... yeah, yeah. You know, I wonder why he has not. He did. He's done the war movies. He's done the westerns. You know, he's done the gangster films. What is he? What has he not done? No sci-fi. Is that something he'll never do? Probably. I don't. I don't. He's not into that. I you think. Know, I think I know. saw on a podcast where he's. He'll never. He'll never do that. I know he's going to do a series. Oh. Well, a, a TV series or Netflix series. And Robert Rodriguez has done that. He's done well. Yeah. But, you know, you run into him in Austin all the time. Mickey Rourke, he's filming Sin City back then. And mm. I'm there. I'm at, I'm at a little bar in a, in a restaurant that, like, the mayor and a lot of people and Lance Armstrong, people would always go to. It's right across the street from where I was right. living off okay. West 7th down there. And uh, Mickey Rourke walks in. And he's filming Sin City. I was like, we're like, Mickey, we love your work. We want to buy you a shot. And he's like with some Asian girl. He has on a Guns N' Roses t-shirt like you. <laughs> he has on a pinstripe suit and he has on plastic motorcycle boots for like a crotch rocket, like tucked in. What? You know, when we run yeah. into him, we're like, we love you. And he's with that Asian girl, I think was from Sin City. And they just got done filming and they're going to go have a drink. And he's like, I'm going to buy y'all a shot. He was just like the realest. Cool. Wow. He was just a cool. He was a real one, you know. What's the most famous person you ever Met or at least seen. Well, like for you and me, oh man, what's his name? Uh, uh, the Punisher. What was his name? Uh, uh, boxing. What was his name? And he's a promoter now for this. Oh, about uh, he came through the club one night. Wanted bottle service. Bernard well, Hopkins. But Bernard Hopkins really came okay. through the club that night. He was cool as hell. He's the real deal. He's he, but he's so used to people pop the bottles and all this for you. And I was working for these Lebanese guys at the time. <laughs> they didn't care who he was, and he's like, I didn't care who this guy. It wasn't him. It wasn't anything against him. We loved him. It was all the little entourage, you know. It's like instant gratification, self entitlement. They wanted, he wanted it right now. It's like mm -hmm. well, we don't, we don't know who. Um, you know, it's funny in that thing. I think I met more people there. Than I did maybe in Houston. I sold Yao Ming a car. That was a random thing. Yao Ming, huh? Yeah, Chinese nationals take right. half of his money. <laughs> yeah, that but, must have been a big car. Uh, oh man, we got him to fit in it. They had to move the whole seat back in a seven series. The whole like underneath, you know, the racks and the whole thing for the seat. Voids of BMW North American warranty. The steering wheel they had to pull up. He's still in there like this, like a like a go kart. <laughs> Big guy, but right. man, he was like a robot. His mom, super nice, sold her X5, but mm -hmm. you know, tea okay. ceremony and everything. And he had the translator, Colton, I think was his name at the time. But imagine this you make all this money, you're a superstar, and right. they love you in Houston, big Asian population. But everybody loves the Rockets, especially at that time, right. especially when they were championship, uh, you know, era. you yeah. remember that. But here's the thing, coach you have to ask permission to spend your own money. For him to stroke that eighty-six thousand dollar check, plus permission, another whatever permission from who? The Chinese nationals. Really? He was okay. over here on loan to play. Oh, so think about okay. that. But he wanted to get another car and go back to Shanghai. Well, that's another story, though. <laughs> <laughs> Duh. Do you do, do you have any hobbies? Do you have any collections? I do. What what, uh, what are those? Man, arrowheads. Arrowheads. There's a there's a guy. Uh, Man, we, we talk about arrowheads, don't we, Ellen? I you know I should have brought. Where, 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 where do you some. find them now? We used to find them all the time. Man, there's that. What's his name? Uh, Whitfield on on there. J W Whitfield. He uh he's a beast. If you follow him, a lot of people follow him, but. You know, you dig up stuff around the Brazos, man. It's there's stuff all around right. here, and a hey, Texas A and M has a huge collection. But I have just stuff from family, you know, family property right. and that kind of thing. But you would be surprised what you can dig up. You know what I mean? Right. And uh, I got some. I should have brought. I'm gonna bring you one. But yeah, but you we, know, we like to have them because we 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 used to run around and, and play with rocks and find yeah. them and just toss them out. <laughs> toss them. Yeah, you know, it's like flint. You know, but you know. These aren't the polished ones, you know, from like the Indian market in Santa right. Fe, you know, man. Yeah, These are real right. ones you find, but uh, that I got a I got a ridiculous boxing glove uh, collection. Yeah, I was, was kind of embarrassed. I forgot to ask you to to bring some of those because you got you got some uh, you got some uh, different kind of you got you got Clitor Reyes and I got a couple, man. Stuff, I got a couple, you? but you know, I like the Muay Thai ones the best, so okay, you know, and uh, 
and and that kind of thing. But you know, everybody likes their own kind of thing. I should use them a little bit more these days, but you know, <laughs> car business, you get, you know, yeah. it's always what's for lunch. That's another thing. Everybody always asks, what's for lunch? What's for lunch in the car yeah. business? Oh, yeah. And it's like, man, you know, uh, I, think, I think that's, that's in all office settings because we, <laughs> we're, what's for lunch? <laughs> it gets about that time. Everybody's like, yeah. man, there's been some places around here in town lately too, though, oh. to hit up. Have oh, you been yeah. to Nick the Greek? Nope. Uh-uh. That second location? Nope. Oh, uh, Pretty good. Well, I tell you what, it's good for here. It's good Greek food, but it's like uh, if you've had Nico Nico's in Houston, Dimitri, what's up? Shout out to Dimitri and Nico Nico's. He had that. Remember, uh, what's his name uh, uh, with the hair? I slime and ice machine. Uh, oh, I can't uh, remember that. Marvin Zindler. Oh, I went this news. news. <laughs> he would have the blue st- the blue ribbon awards. So you will go up and order at their place in Houston, and it was like a rack, man. Just that. Okay. So you know, and it's like it was all it was the it was the real deal. And then of course you know all these places expand and everything. Right. But that place is kind of good. But uh, man, you know, you know Zeitman's. That's who you ought to have on. Okay. Yeah, Blake Zeitman. Have you yeah. have you had the Richie Rich sandwich over there? No, not yet. Man. Nice. Tell well, you what. We're gonna we're gonna discuss this after the podcast. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> so uh, give me a list of uh, good restaurants because I. I usually go to the same ones and order the same well, thing. So. I'm the same way, but I'll, here's so I do the same thing, but I'm going to try a new place. Huh? Yeah, you know, I'll you know, fat car it. salesman, we're going to do it, right? Yeah. But then we always go back to the same it's places. The same ones and order the same thing. That Charlie Max hamburgers. Have you had that? No, no. Oh, man. He's out there by absolute tire and wheel out on Highway 6. Okay. Killer. Killer. And, you know, of course, I love uh, Margie's, you know, yeah, Alpristine Grill, classic. classic. Yeah. But you got to eat it there. That's mm. my thing. You got it. Like sometimes, like all oh, these tacos are good. Do they travel well? Because right. you know we got to have them back at the office, or are you going to go out and eat? Because you go to Margie's, it could take a while, but you know it's perfection. Yeah. And then you got top of the hill. Don't get me started. We went there a couple of weeks ago, my wife and I, and there were we got the Superman. So oh yeah, that was pretty good. Oh yeah. Uh, let's talk about uh, something you love dearly. Your dogs. Oh God, the pug dogs. <laughs> Sancho, <laughs> my my number one stud dog. I got it. What's his name? Sancho. Sancho. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> the other man. You know what I mean. So let me tell you about Sancho. Sancho just had surgery okay. on on Monday, and I was Is sweating it because of all the chains he's wearing. <laughs> <laughs> so his neck hadn't turned green yet, but you know, you know, his his mom isn't uh, wearing that stuff, so he wears it. It's funny that we put mm-hmm. it on there. Phenomenal dog. I used to take him everywhere with me, but people people abuse it, and I'm going to say I was guilty too. That emotional support animal thing. You want to take him to the airport or this mm-hmm. or that. You know, you want to pop out on the weekend and come back. But I would take him everywhere with me, and I absolutely loved it. But here's the, here's the thing. He just had surgery Monday. This boy, <laughs> those eyeballs. You're going to watch you <laughs> in the front door at the same time. <laughs> yeah. He had surgery. He had one testicle that didn't descend. And as a breeder, I have to I have to disclose it, right? But we had six boys in his first litter. So he's the one nut wonder. And it's like, how did this even happen? So now, you know, I have all the other, the pugs, the, the little boys, all of their nuts descended. And, you know, you start to think, it's funny what you focus on now when you love your dogs. I'm like, thank all God right. their nuts descended, you know? <laughs> I would never would have, if I would have told you that like, years ago. I'd be like, "This guy's crazy." Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> you know. Well, yeah, those are those are pretty cute. cute so, dogs. so you know, it's a poor man's Frenchie. They can swim, but I had to have the C-section. Um, Sassy had um, saw, uh, El Chapo. I'm watching a documentary on YouTube uh-huh. on El Chapo escaping. First one to pop out, El Chapo. <laughs> so I delivered uh-huh. him. I was like, "Oh crap!" So you know, you get on YouTube. Love you too. Snipping, doing everything on the video. I could be a surgeon, Doctor Fluhop, right? You think right. you you do the stuff, but but my thing is, so then I had to take her for the other ones, C section. So just like the Frenchies, all my my coworkers have the Frenchies, man, and I love them. They're gorgeous, but you know, eighteen seventy eight hundred dollars, twenty thousand yeah. <laughs> if they carry the fluffy gene. Yeah. Rest in peace, uh, my sales manager Tariq. Wonderful guy. He just had he just had in a, a business deal. Two of his puppies pass away. There's only two in the litter, and oh. I was like, oh man. But you know, Frenchy people, and that's the hot thing. Just surpassing number right. one dog they yeah. saw over Labradors. I'm like, what? Yeah. Times are changing. <laughs> but pugs, man, they're the most loyal dogs. They'll be right there. They're always watching you. 
You know? right. How big do they get? Is oh, it, man, mine are, mine's like 12 pounds. I got these okay. mini pugs, you know? All right. Cool. So, yeah, beautiful animals. <laughs> uh, when you came in, you gave me something. You said it was. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was called Sage. sage. Yeah, Sage, tell, tell man. Me what, <laughs> tell <laughs> so, me what this is. <laughs> yeah, people know Sage. It's kind of a hippie dippy thing, right? right? But, you know, you know, like when they invite you into your house like a vampire, you got to be invited in, right? But right. but seriously, no, they say it's to, to remove the evil spirits from your house and everything, right. though. But for your studio, you know, because after I've been in here, you know, you got to have. You know, I burned something on so here. So you light it up? Yeah, you just you light kinda... it up and you do this. Some people say some chance or something. Okay. I don't know about all that. I'm just like, I better like this just in case, you know. <laughs> all right. You know, keep, yeah. the hate, well, you gotta keep those that. haters away, is that right? What it is, the, That's uh, really what it for is. For evil yeah. spirits? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have it over here. All right. Well, start thank you. To get I appreciate your that. You're welcome. Then you me a little box with you're something. Welcome, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, always come bearing gifts, all man. All right. Thank you. Uh, let's talk about the current state of car dealerships. Oh, yeah, yeah. What is the current state of, of car dealerships and car sales? Well, I'm going to tell you what. The average the average monthly price right now is five twenty five dollars for, for a vehicle, right? That people are doing a payment. A lot of people are bottom line, but let's be honest. Most people are like, what's my monthly note? What's my monthly payment? You know what I mean? Right. Um, it was $21,300. Was the average for a car? And yeah, it, but it, five five twenty five is is a six year, right? Yeah, six yeah. or seven years. That well, it is well, now? depends on how much money you put down. Uh, people always say, you know, they always want to go in and ask you about what's the interest rate. What's the interest rate? I get it, but I'm tell you what, two complete separate things. Product knowledge. I know the stuff. I hear it. I'm around it. I'm I'm very privy to it. It's not that we're avoiding it. It's that man, debt to income ratio. Uh, how many open autos do you have? There's so many things that go into the the finance and the interest rates now, you know, and it's housing went up, cars followed suit with everything else. People are like, oh, I'm going to go to my my own bank. Your bank, your own bank is probably the same as what, you mm-hmm. know, so. Hmm. But that's a, that's a big hurdle these days. And uh, people are like, man, people are getting 0%, 1.9. Well, you know, we offer 2.9, you know, if you, if you qualify for it. Thing is. You know, not everybody qualifies for it. And then, you know, where people were getting 2.9, 3.9, now they're getting 5 and 7. And they're like, oh, man. But that here's the thing. That's the whole world. So right. don't kill the messenger. It's just, I, you know, it's no nothing we can do. It. I'm right there in the same boat with you. You know what right. I mean? But, you know, I look at it like this. If you really, if you really want to get that car, you're going to pay the diesel, right? You're going to pay the gas. You're going to fill it up because you got to. Kind of the same thing with the interest rates. People people are going to dog me for that in the comments, you know, but it, it is the truth. If you want it, you're going to get, get it. it. You're going to get it. Right. And and things are going to go up and down, you know what I mean? So, mm. but, you know, it's not it's not really us. It's the Fed changing the interest rates all the time, you know what I mean? So, but I'm going to tell you something between you and me right here on this show. <laughs> between you and me. <laughs> Um, you know, from, you know, we, we always have product knowledge and we have people come in and this new regime with, uh, with, uh, Keating Auto Group is phenomenal. But I'm going to tell you what, from research and everything, this month in May, if you have to get a car, like I always say, one of the bankers' wives get their new Tahoes, right? Yeah. I joke around, but <laughs> they say, they say April and May, and I hope that doesn't kill me for the summer, but, but they say get it now. No sense of urgency, no like, salesman tactics but just factual you can look it up you can research it yourself it seems like the sweet spot for everything is going to be now and in, in may mm-hmm. we'll see what happens with these rates i don't know i'm okay. crystal ball you know what i mean i could just tell you do you want to get second row bucket or right. second row bench you know yeah, what I mean? so uh, you just got a little insight uh on yeah. something here huh yeah <laughs> so, uh the rumors are that a lot of dealerships are going away what do you think about that what do you think about these uh manufacturers selling direct you know here's here's my thing some people like to read the newspaper some people get their news from the tv some people now get their news it's scary from uh social media right maybe they'll replace me with chat gpt or whatever it is one day <laughs> you know what i mean but uh you know like tesla and that kind of thing for everything where they're like oh it's going to be like tesla and you go in okay if there's one set price we're for that Y'all for that? Hey, you go on Amazon. You're like, I want to get these uh, these jeans. I want to get these boxing gloves. There's one set price. It's probably mm-hmm. a little higher, but instant gratification, self entitlement, like we we're talking about earlier. You pay it. So here's my thing. 
there'll be a no a non-negotiable number. Do y'all want that or do y'all want to negotiate? You want the brother-in-law deal, the Bryce price, or do you want to have it where they're like, right. this is it and that's all? Because right. Carvana, how are they doing? They look like they're sinking. They only have like $432 million on operating right now. And they have a lot of stuff out on loan. I don't know how that's working out. But if that's the future, they've already failed. But maybe they've just stumbled and they'll adjust, adjust adapt, pivot. I don't know. You know, so. But what, is, it's, what is yeah? What is the market saying about that? So, you know, there's a couple things you can. You, it's it's this. What are what's fed and put out there to us in the media? A okay. Because we're all we're all see it and feel it, right? And then B, it's like I can tell you one thing: before COVID, you had all these cars that were out there. People love selection, right. but it's kind of that's kind of what it's going to go to, where you only have kind of that Tesla model. Only like, okay, you want this, and it ordered and it came in. People go what they want, and they like it. You know what I mean? Right. But that's it's going to be less cars now on the on the thing. You still get what you want, but you might have to order it. Right. You know. Are cars getting too expensive? Are, are people not buying cars because they're too expensive? I mean, I've seen some cars that are 95000 When you've paid off a vehicle, <laughs> when you've paid off a vehicle, right, and then you're like, man, I haven't bought a vehicle in a few years, and you come down over there, and it's like, I think cars go up about, quote me on this or don't quote me, but I think it's about 1300 to 1800 a year that new car prices go okay. up. So with inflation, maybe, right, just ballparking, okay? But cars are going up. But we still have cars for thirty-eight thousand dollars trucks. But you also have some for seventy-two. Which one do you want? All right. Capitalism. You want it? Flaunt it? Buy it? Get it? Right? Like the, the old rap song said, whatever it was. <laughs> but but you know people are going to get what they want. Some people that's their horse, man. You know what I mean? In, in right. a Western kind of point of view, that's their horse. They want a good ass horse. You know okay. what I mean? But um, and, and what are the banks are saying about the? The markets. So the bank, the banks, the the biggest thing is it's not even the banks are tied to it. We're tied to it. it's the Fed. How are they going to adjust? How are they going to adjust interest okay. rates? You're going to give all this money away, not to be political or anything, but to the Ukraine. What? And we have other stuff over here. And, I, right. and, I, and now, now I'll turtle show back because I, you know, I said we weren't going to do that. But my my thing is okay. So what are we going to do about the inflation? You know. Are they gonna are they gonna just go ahead and raise interest rates? Is that the right thing? I'm not an economist, but you know, I sure listen to a lot of them because we're all watching. And uh, you know, it, it's like this with anything. You're gonna adjust and adapt, right? Right. Whatever you're into in your in your field or your course, you're gonna do it. What about the housing? What about these realtors? You know? Right. They're they're so, gonna feel uh, tell tell me about interest rates. How how bad is the rise of interest rates hurting the car selling business? I mean, you still have people who want it and they need to have that car in the school pickup line, you know what I mean? The, right. the keeping up with the Joneses. You have some people who just want a point A to point B. But uh it's, you just, know, it's just the need, right? Just the need. I mean, used cars are always gonna be a little bit more than than new cars. I, I never thought we'd go 84 months, but then there's some places that go over to 100. You know, really? te Texas is pretty <laughs> – we sell a lot of cars in Texas, right? All right. But we're pretty conservative compared to other states. You have – some people go over to 100 months financing. No penalty pay at all early, right. you know. Yeah. But I mean, the, the reason I got a truck, you know, that Chevy, that two-door yeah. Chevy – Nine, what is it? Two thousand four. Yeah, works fine. My son drives it. I had to get another point one. Point A to point B. We didn't fit anymore. That's you hey. Know, my, my kids got really big, and we we didn't fit in there. You got, so you, I, got you got you a nice truck though. So I got me a nice truck from uh from buy it from Bryce. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's fun though. Like like I said, you meet a lot of different people. I got right. I got a guy for this. I got a guy for that. You know, drywall, whatever. That uh, it's it's a blessing because you definitely get into the community a lot and. They like to do a lot of stuff for the community and that kind of thing. So right. they've been good. I, I love working over there for Aguilin. So uh, do you think that the uh, that they're going to the automakers are going to start selling direct? What what will be better? I mean, in your, in your point of view, I mean, the, you know, everything's so like Amazon Prime now. Everybody's like, oh, click it and get it. You know what I mean? And that kind of thing, but there's still going to be. I think there's going to be a resurgence for people who want. They want to sell. They want not necessarily a salesman. They want customer service. All right. Okay. Process over technology. Always. You can get as much technology as you want, where you have a car coming out of a thing and dropping it off to you. But the, it's still process. People. It, it's not just that they don't care about. 
you know, they want to go back to the same person because they had a good experience for a salesman. But at the end of the day, for not even for salesmen, let's just say dealerships. Let's say the car business. Let's pull it down from the microcosm to the macrocosm to its process. Did we make it an easy buying experience? Do we make it a fun buying experience? Because it's a big, it's a, it's a big process. It's a big second thing after a car, like we said. I mean, after a house, right? right. So to me, it's like yeah, you, better, you, you still want to look at it. You still want to kick the tires. The tangible. You, you still want to test drive it. You still want to smell it. You know, there, there's so much data we see on our phone, but there's some stuff I got to print out. I want to look at it. I want to study it. Right. Yeah. What am I supposed to feed my pugs? What am I not? You know, right. or or whatever. But Back to back to this, the process over everything. Customer service better be up there because how are you going to stand out? Anybody can go buy a car anywhere. Right. What if all the interest rates are the same? How do you stand out? What are you that you know? It's and and here's the thing though too is so so many times just in sales in general, people sell on price and it's not the the wants and needs of the customer. It's not sometimes it's just people see that car out there that Z, that ZL1 Camaro and they're not making any more and they're like, I gotta have it. You know, right. that's a, that's a big thing too. Yeah. Doesn't matter what your want or need is, but you want it. Let's fulfill that. Right. Yeah. I mean, the vehicles I bought the last two were you know were from you, and I was like, I'm not called Bryce. I don't want to deal with nobody else. <laughs> well, I try. I try to make it easy, especially if I've earned your business before. Just right. let let's let's go because a you you've you've trusted me. B you know these guys I work with are pretty solid right. about stuff. They 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 really want to sell you more than one car so why you go to houston or some of these places and it's like why well, screw the customer i can't stand that or you go to some of these uh, dealerships i'm not going to say any names in town and they'll shotgun your credit why and, and meaning you send it to like six banks why would you do that to the customer well, my guys the big difference in this between you and me is you know you have you, always it's a, you got a sales manager up there and it's like a green or a red you know it's like you either got it or you got you don't have it on there you get approved by the bank. Well, you know, if they can pick up the phone and talk to somebody t sometimes and say, hey, you know, this guy, he, he's a plumber, works for himself. He can prove his income, but, you know, it's a little bit different thing. But, you know, it's so rules and regulations and, and you have to do it by the book. And working for somebody who does that, it makes it so much easier for me. Right. Just, you know, you don't have any funny, duddy stuff. You know? Right. So, uh, with the market crash, are, are we heading into a recession? I mean, what I don't do have a crystal think? ball, but I think, I mean, I think so. I don't think it will be as bad as a 2008 housing bubble, but okay. I mean, you know, ebb and flow, everything, right? Democrats, Republicans, doesn't matter. No, I think it's just the economy. It's like they pull it and then it's like, what do they say? You see who has their shorts on? Who was it? Winston Churchill said, mm -hmm. you see who has their shorts on their underpants when the tide goes out, you know, who's, who's out there, who, who overextended and who didn't, that's going to happen. Okay. So my thing, my thing is just, man, work hard, pay your bills. This is the biggest thing. Oh, the dealership did me bad. The dealership did me wrong. They don't want to work with me. Uh, you need to fix your credit, sir. You know what I mean? <laughs> but we can't say that. But I see it so many times. Or 18, 24-year-olds, just because of Texas A&M and everything. Man, there's a resurgence in I have faith in people know to take care of their credit. It's just as important as getting the car now. Some people, they just don't know. They don't, I'm like, there really needs to be people to educate. And it's not that it's our job to educate, but I do try to help people, okay. you know, a little bit from what I know. I don't know everything, like I say, but I know what I know. But mm -hmm. if I can help people and that helps them where they can get other cars from me, then it's a win win, right? Right, right. So, uh, Bryce, what else do you want to add to the podcast? Well, what do you want to talk about? Well, my thing is not just for car business, but anything you do. It's uh, not what, what you do, it's what you should do. You know what I mean? It, it's like you go somewhere, it's like, well, it's always been done this way. You know, I'm not here to reinvent the wheel, whatever it is, wherever you're working, right? But I see so many people say, well, that's what they do, and they just do it. And it's like passing the buck to me. And to work somewhere where it's like you have input, where they're like, oh, you know what? That does work better, or this is more efficient, you know right. what I mean? Whatever you're into, you know? So Okay. Well, uh, any shout-outs you want to send out? Man, uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Shout out to Bobby Powers, of course. All right, Bobby Powers. You know, the, the other coach, the All other right. coach. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, uh, shout out to Vince Rosas over there, Nine Round. Nine Rounds. Lo love to go over there. And then, uh, you know, just uh, 
my my coworkers and everything and, and my clients and everybody who's listening, you know, it's just you know, it's fun to chop it up with you over here. And uh, we need to have more people in the community come on here on the show and just kind of, I think it's good just to, of all the technology, all the stuff going on out there in the world, now you have just two people right. sitting across like the old radio thing, having a conversation. Right. And, and I think it's phenomenal. And, and that's why I did this podcast, because I want to I want to meet not uh, not only local people, but people who, who do things and know things and and motivate people and explain things to people and oh, yeah. you know and everything it's going to be fun it's going to be informational you know we're here to have a good time and yeah and be positive and, and you know try to help people out and help help our community absolutely that's, oh that's what this is about one other thing because you know i'm always like it never watch tv you you said what's a good movie or what's your favorite movie i'll tell you a show i liked but mm-hmm. i had to get that darn apple tv to get it wait and- wait wait ted lasso uh, no, everybody oh. loves Ted Lasso. <laughs> everybody loves Ted Lasso. No, Love Echo Three. Echo Three. Echo Three. Because you know what 3? I like? It's you it's like six or seven episodes. You're done. I like something like that. Like right, we, a, have, we have Apple because I, I got Apple for Ted Lasso. Oh right, well, I like I like realistic stuff. You know yeah. when they start doing I, I you know what people I, I got a lot of uh, friends that they, they like the superhero stuff or okay. Marvel and all that. I'm not gonna knock it. It's just not for me. It's not realistic. You know what I mean? It's like it's like the junk food. I think. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's a junk food of what we watch, you know. Man. Yeah. Okay. But uh, Echo Three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Echo Three is good. Okay. Well, we're gonna check it out and absolutely and binge on it too. And uh, yeah, let me let me know what y'all think in the comments on here. Who you're going with? If you're gonna go yeah. with Ryan King Garcia, or if you're gonna go with uh, Gervonta with the power hook. You know, Tank Davis. Yeah, huh? Tank Davis. So yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be a good one. They both have a power hook. That's what I don't understand. Yeah. Well, I think Ryan's is a little better though. <laughs> tank, tank by decision. I hate to say it. it's not going to be a knockout like we want. You think so? It'll I, either I, be real early or it'll be in the. Yeah. I remember a guy. I remember on a side note. I remember a guy and his wife said we're not allowed to gamble anymore, and I don't know why. You remember Conor McGregor and uh, and Khabib, and oh, it was yeah. a big fight, right? Yeah. And this guy, I mean, you know, I'll go to the gym and, and do stuff, but you know, this guy got real into the stuff and. Uh, I said it'll be Khabib fourth round by submission. I just said it, right? I don't know. It's so two hundred bucks, right? It happens. <laughs> this dude said, "How did this happen?" Right? And I, and I think I still think about it. You know, it's like I laugh because his wife said, "You cannot gamble with him anymore." It's like it's just a fun bet, but right. what were the chances? You know, oh, yeah. I wish it was like that all the time. Yeah. Uh, so you want to call this this next one? Huh? Uh, Tank Davis and what do yeah, you I'm think? going. I'm going Tank decision. All right, I'm, 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 I'm not gonna say because <laughs> we don't know. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, Bryce, I want to appreciate you being. Uh, want to thank you for for being here on the on the podcast, and uh, you know, I, we want to thank you for being here, and, and uh, want to tell everybody to uh, please subscribe to the Settle Con Manuel on YouTube. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Hey, and, uh, follow by it from Bryce on there. If uh, I always. Uh, We'll have the deals on there for you. But, uh, you know, it's been a pleasure, and I can't thank you enough, Coach, and it's good to see you again. Right. Oh, wait. Going, I yeah. got to bring the – I got to oh, bring okay. out the – Oh, all right. You got one of those, huh? Hey, for, for life, baby, right there. <laughs> That's it. Maybe one day he might bring it back. I don't know. You I know? might bring it back. I don't you know. You never know. I'm, We're not going to hype him up. We're not going to hype him up. Maybe I need a little break, but uh, I mean, as of right now, I'm kind of enjoying the uh, the extra time. Well, it's always a good time. You know, you'd have, you'd have the kids in there. You'd have you'd let old fogies like me go in there and put the headphones on. Just sometimes you got to hit a bag. You know what I mean? All right. Better than just working out and hitting yeah. weights. And look at all the people who got injured with CrossFit. Yeah. So, no further questions, <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I want to thank y'all for tuning in, and uh, we see y'all next time. Thank y'all. Y'all have a good one, man.